Hey everybody, today we're lucky to be joined by Brooke from Love Your Guts. Love Your Guts is an amazing company that's all about healing your gut so that you can live a life with more energy, better health, better skin, more concentration, all sorts of things. Um, and at McKenzie's Meats, we stock a couple of Love Your Guts products. So we stock the liver capsules and the organ blends. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to chat with Brooke and Nath a little bit um, over the last maybe six months. Uh, and I really wanted to get Brooke on here to explain more about what she does uh, and how she can help you heal your gut. So welcome, Brooke. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, so, Brooke, I, th I think it would be a cool place to start um, if we talk about how you got into nutrition um, and gut health. Yeah. Um, okay, well, nutrition, it kind of started probably all through growing up. Um, I was always really passionate about, or maybe not passionate, but just really in tune with what I was eating. I was growing up, grew up in a household that was pretty conscious of what we were eating to a certain extent. Mm. Um, but in general, we ate pretty well. Um, went to uni. I was actually doing paramedics for a while and went down that rabbit hole and got caught up in... Um, you know, not eating well. You know, if you go to a lecture, we always got like a big vanilla latte and a muffin to try yeah. save weight. And the lectures went for three hours and we just had no, everyone had no energy, was falling asleep. Um, you know, it just was not the picture of health. And I went on prac doing paramedics and we were just picking up people that were so unhealthy um, and we weren't really helping them. We were just transporting them. Right. And it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just an Uber service. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you had your emergency cases, but 90% of the cases were just picking up unhealthy people that were overweight, that were, you know, just had um, health issues that were related to their weight pretty much and we were picking them up and we couldn't do anything or say anything and it kind of hit me um, that I just didn't want to do that I wanted to be a part of the prevention not just um, you know transporting them I guess and so I also um, you know knew a little bit about nutrition not much but knew that there was a better way of eating um, I was doing shift work at the time and just things weren't aligning well in my life you know I was tired I lacked focus I didn't really like doing paramedics for the reason of I wasn't really helping people um, so yeah that kind of sparked my passion for nutrition I did my own little um, I don't know it was a bit of a mediocre kind of cleanse like you know cut out sugar stop drinking large coffees <laughs> I mean, even just doing tiny things like that I really felt so much better and um anyway I, I ended up changing from paramedics and started studying health science and majored in nutrition cool. so I guess that's where it all kind of began and um I finished my uni course in that and um I was working as a personal trainer while I was doing uni as well uh, and it kind of just all kind of flowed and grew from there. I was, um, you know, training clients, but also I was able to focus on their nutrition. Um, I mean, the uni degree, it was pretty outdated. Yeah, I was going to ask, how did, um, <laughs> how did the kind of like nutrition information or science that you were learning at uni compare um, to what you were seeing in the real world? Oh, to be honest, like... I use probably 5% of my uni degree now, like even maybe not even that. Like, okay. yeah, it's just really outdated. Like at the time, I didn't think too much of it. Mm -hmm. But when I came out into the real world, it was just, um, I mean, like you realise you're learning from books that are 15 years old, 20 yeah. years old, like, and it's mainly just about public health. Like a lot of the education is around low socioeconomic groups and you know um, a lot of indigenous stuff and which is great but like when you're dealing with just the everyday person mm. um, the food pyramid just doesn't work <laughs> no you know, 
and that's what we had to that's what we had to you know follow we had to do all our assignments based off the food pyramid we had to make sure we were giving the correct answers that um, were based off the food pyramid and if you wanted to skew out of that at all which I kind of did towards the end but um, you know you just get a bad mark and it was like what well, you know what's the point I've yeah, learned yeah. more coming out of that degree than what I did in it yeah right yeah because yeah. I mean like if you want to you got to give the answer that the teacher's after and so I don't yeah. know you, you see those diagrams of the food pyramid and the I mean you'll, you know it better than I do but I think that bottom rung is like primarily grains right yeah just carbohydrates and, grains and carbs yeah yeah and you know it's so crazy that you know the medical system and um even I'm not trying to shame shame what's been going on but like even dietetics they have to follow that like in right. the hospital they have to follow that food pyramid and you know dietetics are giving people with diabetes like type 2 diabetes the you know, their food plans are based off carbohydrates and how are you ever going to heal type 2 diabetes if, like, you're being recommended a high-carb diet? It just doesn't make sense. Not at all. That's what we're still doing and that's what a lot of people think is right, which is a little bit unfortunate. Mm, yeah, like, even if you're a really healthy person, that high-carbohydrate diet's rarely going to help you go to the next level. You know, you, you might, you'll be able to survive maybe, but it's not gonna, yeah. it's not going to help you thrive. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, a lot of the carbohydrates that are recommended are just simple carbohydrates that aren't, don't really have any health benefits to them. Mm. Whereas mm. maybe we could focus on more complex ones like sweet potato and that would be a little bit different, you know. But, yeah, anyway, I could go down a rabbit hole of that. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... That's basically how I got into nutrition, but I guess I became really passionate about gut health when I um, was more in tune with my own body and my own gut health issues. Um, I was seeing a lot of clients, a lot of female clients predominantly, and um, they had a lot of issues. Like they would come to me mainly because I was a personal trainer at the time. They would come to me to lose weight. That was yeah. the main goal. Um, and we would, you know, I would give them a nutrition plan. I would train them and more and more of them just weren't losing weight. They were, like they were doing everything right, but they just weren't losing weight. And that kind of sparked me digging deeper into, okay, well, why aren't these women losing weight? Like they're mm. eating well, moving, is there, what else is there? And um, you know, that coupled with my own journey, I had like symptoms of my own, which we can go into, but it kind of made me dig deep into gut health. And that was really um, something that just kept coming up and coming up in all of my clients. And once we started to address gut health and also stress, mm -hmm. those two things, then things started changing and I could see some really positive results. And um, that's what I did in my own journey as well. Just addressed my own gut health issues and stress, those two things, and just saw so much progress with me and with my clients too. So that kind of moved me along into focusing on gut health because I realized that was really the root of a lot of the issues that people were struggling with. Mm, definitely. I mean, like you can't see your gut. So when somebody kind of says to you, hey, you need to improve your gut health, it, I can imagine, you know, it'd be a little bit confusing for the average like gym goer who's, who's going to see a personal trainer slash nutritionist. How, how, did you, how do you kind of communicate to people that your gut really is the key to, to unlocking health in, in so many areas? Um, I think like it's really hard, like what you said. I mean, like... You know, you go to the gym, you lift weights and you see physical results pretty mm. pretty quickly. And gut health can be quick, but for a lot of people, it is like a slow journey to, um, I guess, healing your gut. And I, I don't think everyone can like fully, I, I put it in brackets because healing your gut is like a really mediocre term. There's so much more to it. Right, okay. but, yeah, but I mean, like, it's just easy to say because um, I guess it's like a, something that people are moving towards to heal their gut. But 
in terms of communicating it, I think uh, you, I just try and I think people like get the idea once they start putting little habits in place to um, improve their gut health and they start to see the changes and it's more, even though it's a little bit slower, um, you know, you start to have more energy, you start to have clearer skin, you start to be able to have, you know, eat foods that maybe once you couldn't. Yeah, that's have, an interesting one. Yeah, you have regular bowel motions. I mean, you don't get bloated after a meal. Like, and you just see little things happen. Like the first one that most people see is like having regular bowel movements, like mm. they complicated days and then they have a poo every day. They're like, oh my gosh, it is my gut <laughs> <Right> health. <through. laughs> But um, in terms of communicating, it's just like, I don't know, like there's no clear way of communicating that it's yeah. about your gut. But as long as people understand that your gut is the centre of basically everything, like you have a gut brain access, you have your gut skin access, gut hormone access, and they all interconnect and are constantly speaking to each other. And, I mean, you can only treat what you see for so long and then you and it doesn't work and then you have to start asking questions like okay well what can I see like what's inside that's not working and you have to dig a little bit deeper because yeah you, you can only slap a band-aid on something for so long and then totally. yeah and then you have to go internally like you know with skin people put products and products on their skin to try and heal it but then they aren't asking bigger questions about, okay, well, what's internal that's causing my skin to flare up? And that brings you all the way back to your gut health. And it was the same with clients that were trying to lose weight. And, you know, we were focusing on external things like what they were putting in their mouth and how they were moving their body, but we weren't focusing on the gut. And that was when everything changed. Mm, yeah I, I think when you <laughs> yeah no but it, it's tricky right once you sort of once you do make a few changes and uh, like maybe we can talk about what small changes people can make um, yeah. and then you kind of keep an eye out for things which is kind of what which is like what I've done like for example like not feeling bloated um, or the like regular yeah. bowel movements um, yeah. like not not farting and burping like when you sort of make a few changes yeah. And you start to yeah. notice that stuff. You're like, oh, my God, I shouldn't be doing all those things. It's not healthy. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a reason yeah. it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people think that, um, you know, what's common is normal, but mm. it isn't. Like, it's common, like, farting and, and getting a bit of indigestion and burping and not pooing every day. Like, that's so common, but it's not normal. And it's Yeah. Like, Common's not good. <laughs> yeah. You can settle for common and... Um, once you start making little changes, then you realise that, yeah, okay, it's it's not normal, you know, because mm. you start to see improvement in those things. Mm. So what, what are some of the small changes that people can make? Um, so, well, I mean, the gut is really adaptable. So you can just make really small changes and see some really good progress. Um, I have to say, like, in some cases, it can be a little bit more difficult, but in general, there are some really good changes you can make nutrition-wise and also in terms of your stress um, that you can, most people will see some really good benefits from. So I always start, I mean, we have a program in Love Your Guts and we always begin with nutrition because it seems to be um, one that is quite easy to change and um, most people respond really well to little changes. So I always focus on, um, especially for the gut, at first removing just things that are going to inflame the gut. So we focus on an anti-inflammatory diet, which mean, basically means reducing or removing foods that are going to be causing inflammation in the body and in the microbiome. So just like standard things like refined sugar, um, packaged foods, gluten for most people is quite inflammatory um uh processed oils like vegetable oils which is basically in every packaged food um and then you can go down even more intricate so a lot of high fodmap foods will be inflammatory for people 
but it just gets a little bit more complex the more you go down. But um, at the everyday person would benefit from removing sugar, gluten, and processed oils from their diet. That's something mm. that you can go to your cupboard, look at what's in there and be cutthroat with it because those things are only ca causing more inflammation through your microbiome, which is, uh, in my opinion, the root of the whole issue of you know, how symptoms arise is from inflammation. And then um, while you're removing foods, it's really important to start putting more, um, I guess, nutrient dense foods back into your diet. So um, I really love all green meats. It's like my number one food that I try to get everyone to put back in their diet. I know it's not, um, not very popular. No. <laughs> but, um, the reason being like why I'm such a big advocate for organ meats is because a lot of, well, not a lot, nearly every person is so deficient in, um, you know, B vitamins, zinc, magnesium, you know, vitamin A, choline. And you, you start making this massive list of things that you need to put back into your, your nutrition and organ meats covers all of that. So yeah. You know, you could just go um, have some chicken liver pate and you'll be getting such an awesome dose of all of those nutrients and the most bioavailable bio source as well. So I'm really passionate at trying to push organ meats on every single person that comes into Love Your Guts. Yep. And that's why we have capsules now as well because I know a lot of people don't really like organ meats. So. <laughs> but, um, yeah, really nutrient-dense food and... I'm also really passionate about pushing, um, you know, animal-based fats back into the diet. So like tallow, lard, ghee, butter, awesome. um, all those fats, like they're so nourishing for your gut and they're so full of fat-soluble vitamins, which is like the lubrication that your gut needs. Um, and I think a lot of people are pretty scared of them. So um, the typical person's not going to be having those kind of fats in their diet. Um, and then just focus on whole foods. Um, it doesn't have to be complex. It can be so simple. Um, you know, just focus on having some meat and veg on your plate. And that's such a nourishing meal. You know, it doesn't a lot of people think that it can get really complex, but just simple whole foods, throw some organ meats in there and then get rid of the inflammatory foods. Um, you'll see, I think every person would benefit from that and see progress through their gut. Totally, totally. So it's, I mean, it's like a focus on more natural foods, right? Like if, because the, the really nasty stuff like, um, like gluten and seed oils and preservatives, it's, it's found in, uh, processed foods like if you stick to whole foods of meat and veg like you're suggesting and then organs yeah. as well you're not going to get any of those nasties plus you're going to be getting so many more nutrients yeah. yeah and it's just taking it back to i mean it seems hard but it's actually so easy but mm. it's taking it back to cooking your own meals like that's a massive change people can make that will improve their gut because you know exactly what you're putting in your meal instead of going out and buying takeaway um just get some ingredients it doesn't have to be fancy you don't have to follow a recipe just you know put some veg in the oven you know you know put a roast on or something you know it mm. can be so simple and then you eliminate that whole unknown factor about what's in your food if you can just get into your kitchen and cook a meal. Like even a simple tip like that can improve your gut health. Totally. Yeah. I think, and that, that's kind of linked back to what you were saying before about like a lot of these health issues that we're experiencing, they're not, you know, they're not normal. They might be common at the moment, but historically it's not normal to have terrible yeah. skin or be overweight or have diabetes um, yeah. or, or any sort of myriad of modern illnesses. Um, yeah. And the reason is because our, our nutrition is so, it's so wrong right now. Yeah. We've just moved away from like people, people are looking for quick fixes and quick mm. food and, you know, something quick that they can eat, but they're making it more complex along the way. And we've moved away from what is, should be so simple, just like meat and veg, you know, <laughs> It doesn't have to be complex and it doesn't have to be expensive and 
you can make a really nutrient like organ meats are so cheap like yeah the cheap, so the cheap cheap. Part of meat. and you know it's so simple like just instead of going out and buying a heap of synthetic vitamins that your body can't absorb just have some beef liver or have some chicken liver and you'll be getting all of that goodness and actually absorbing it for a quarter of the cost if that even cheaper you know um but we've just moved away from what can be so simple and mm. want something so quick and you know expensive <laughs> yeah we've over over complicated it big time haven't okay. we? um you were talking about stress before brooke yeah uh, how does how does stress affect your your gut health and then your overall health yeah um Well, maybe I should go into a little bit about my story because it really does revolve around stress. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of developed gut, like gut issues. Um, So for me, my symptoms were I had psoriasis. Um, I actually had that all growing up as well, Um, but it really flared up at a point in my time of my life where I was really stressed. and I just developed food intolerances that were so bizarre that it just didn't make sense to me because I was eating foods for so long and totally fine and then just started developing all these intolerances. My bowels were so irregular. Um, and yeah, it was at a point of my life where I was so stressed. Um, I mean, I probably didn't recognize it at the time, but mm. looking back on it now, I was running, trying to run my own business, uni, and I was also um, doing, I was competing in bodybuilding at the time, funny funny enough, which again, like the diet is so low fat and high carb Mm. bodybuilding. It's just all of it was kind of compounding for me. Um, But I started, you know, like started, first I started looking into my nutrition and cleaning that up getting rid of sugar, getting rid of gluten and cutting out those foods we talked about. Um, I wasn't at the point of including organ meats, but um, I was eating fat, more fats and really good protein options. And I started um, including some supplements, which are now in our Love Your Guts box. So, um, you know, I was taking bentonite clay every day, which we can go into a little bit later as to why, but I was taking the bentonite clay. I was taking... Um, I was having gelatin I was including all these things into my diet um, and I thought that was enough Mm -hmm. but my symptoms were still there and if they weren't there they would still flare up really easy if I did something wrong Um, as in like if I ate something that I shouldn't have like they still flared up so I started digging deeper and Um, It it was probably the hardest thing was like understanding that stress was what was triggering my symptoms the most. Um, And we go into this in our Love Your Guts program and, you know, it's the hardest thing to first identify in your life and then change or respond better to stress because, I mean, we're living in a world where like stress is all around us. It's becoming... Mm -hmm it's becoming normal and common and the pressure of life is building in people. And, you know, what's glorified right now is the go, go, go. And, you know, how much I can fit into my day and, you know, how many people I can please. And that's how I was living my life as well. Like just the go, 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 getting up at 4am, training myself ridiculously, training all my clients, going to uni, you know, how much could I do? That was the goal. Mm. (laughs) And I was so stressed, like just, I wasn't sleeping. My gut was wreaking havoc. And um, yeah, I know that's common now in nearly every person's life. Um, It's not bizarre to be totally stressed. And yeah, unfortunately, um, and people can't really recognize it until, you know, until it's too late their symptoms are wreaking havoc in their life and yeah they they don't recognize it they might change their nutrition they might start moving their body they might start changing their sleep but they're everyone's a little bit um they put a wall up when it comes to stress I think (laughs) and Mm. for me for me I had to 
I had to close the business down. I, I pretty much quit my um, job, what I was doing. And um, I met Nathan and he totally calmed my life down <laughs> and, um, for the better, which I'm so grateful for. Um, but yeah, if it wasn't for me telling me to like calm the F down, I wouldn't, I would have kept going, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's a bit about my story. But we, re we recognise all of that in our community and it's a massive part of our education um, because, I mean, going into a little bit of the science behind it, your body has this um, parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system and your parasympathetic system is your rest and digest. And that's what we want to achieve during the day to be able to digest our food. But nearly everyone is just because of the go, go, go and stress of life, nearly everyone is in their sympathetic nervous system, which the reason we can't digest food is because all our blood flow is going to our heart and going to our lungs so we can breathe and we can, our heart starts racing faster. And the idea is that, you know, your heart races faster, you can get away from whatever's stressing you out. But in this time, like, in our world now you can't get away from the stress it's no like, it's just, your, heart, <laughs> your heart bounding doesn't clear your inbox yeah yeah so um yeah through our program we really try and give people tools to come back to their rest and digest parasympathetic system so wow. so they're calm and you know because you can't avoid stress like it's always going to be there but how you deal with it is the biggest thing and um, you know, there's tools that you can have um, to switch back pretty much instantaneously if you do it properly. Um, but yeah, we educate everyone through that as well. And I think it's the hardest thing, but it's the most important thing that, yeah, it's um, a big topic. And, you know, a lot, yeah, as I said, a lot of people are really resistant to making that life change because for some people it's it is about quitting their job you know their job's their biggest stressor and the pressure of their job is their biggest stress and that's what's causing their gut issues but obviously that's a hard thing to you know be aware of and then a hard thing to change mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah i mean having to grapple with the idea that like what you're doing with yourself or doing with your life isn't isn't going to serve you and you've got it and you feel like you're whenever you quit something you feel like you're going to fall behind um yeah. so that would be yeah, that would be a massive kind of awakening for people to be like oh no this big part of my life is actually you know it's causing damage to my health and yeah. everything's flowing from there yeah and and let's be clear like i'm not telling everyone yeah, yeah. you know go quit your job yeah I'm like, I know. I'm sure you really need to but there's different ways that you can manage that stress and if that stress is there, if you have that pressure um, on you all day, or even if you're creating that pressure, mm. then you need to have tools in place to be able to um, manage that stress. Because so what, what, what sort of stuff are we talking? Like meditation, so, or breathing? Well, yeah, um, it does come back to meditation, but that's not really practical if you're at work and you've got your boss yelling at you and that's creating stress. You can't just go meditate, but. <laughs> <laughs> um the the best way is just to recognize your breath because usually when we're stressed we're hyperventilating and we're not getting nitric oxide to our nose we're not getting enough oxygen you know we're not breathing deeply um yeah we're hyperventilating and creating our body to tighten up and you know just going off topic a little bit but that's the biggest thing I see is that people are eating meals when they're stressed and there's no way you're going to be able to digest that meal. Like there's no way you need to be calm and, and, and um, not stressed when you're eating your meals. So, but one of the tools is just taking two minutes or three minutes out of your day um, and focusing on, deep breathing and the quickest way you can learn how to do it is if you google the box breathing method and it'll show you that you need to breathe in for four seconds hold your breath for four seconds and then exhale for four seconds hold your breath for four seconds so you go in a box of your breath and you can google it and it'll come up straight away but it's honestly the quickest and the most effective way to 
switch your nervous system from that fight or flight to the rest and digest. And it works. If you do it properly, it works. So, you know, I tell people in our group, you know, if their family is stressing them out or at dinner time to step out of the room, take a minute, practice the box breathing method, come back and have your meal. And I guarantee you'll be able to enjoy your meal, digest it, not have any issues after. It's a yeah. really, really good tool. Yeah. And then there's other things like people can, you know, take time to get outside in the morning and get sun on their skin, um, you know, do some deep breathing outside, take your shoes off, go for a walk on the grass, you know, get, get some dirt on your feet or, you know, go for a walk in the morning. You know, there's ways to set your day up so you can manage that stress a lot better. Um, you know, gratitude is a really good way to, you know, focus your attention on the things that bring you joy in your day rather than things that will stress you out. There's just all these little tools and we go into them in a lot more detail, but um, I know a lot of people can just pass them off and think, oh, that doesn't work for me, but you need to just try it and you'll find that it just switches your attention and, you know, it does help you. Mm, yeah, it's a really... Love Your Guts is a really holistic approach, isn't it? Because it's mm. it's the nutrition, it's supplements, de-stressing. Yeah. And then even the breathing and grounding. Yeah. Like it. yeah the, so Love Your Guts, like my main passion was educating people that came into our community. The supplements were like a way, they were, they're such an important part of it and they're a way to get people in the door and invested in it because let's face it people need to be invested in something to stick at it definitely and, yeah and the supplements were a way to get someone in the door and then they get exposed to all of this back end of communication and I focus on nutrition I focus on stress I focus on sleep I focus on the environment and I focus on movement and those five pillars of health are they're the catalyst that's going to really help someone's microbiome. Supplements are just a little step. And then the lifestyle changes that someone can make throughout the program are what that's going to be the lifelong benefit of it. Because my goal isn't for you to take the supplements forever. My goal is for you to change little bits and pieces of your life so you can create better habits. And it's a lifestyle change, basically. Mm. Yeah. That's powerful. In in terms of lifestyle, anyone who follows Brooke on Instagram will see that her husband, Nathan, and their little baby, William, live on the most idyllic farm um, up in like the Byron hinterland or northern New South Wales area. Um, what's what's life like on the, on the farm, Brooke? Um, it's amazing, honestly. We... Both Nathan and I both knew that we wanted to get out of the city because the city, what well, was that that was causing our stress mainly, <laughs> and we both knew that we needed to get out of the city and and um, I guess have a little bit of land. And we knew that we wanted to raise kids on a bit of land. That was our goal. Mm -hmm. um, and we were very blessed to have the property pop up when it did. It was a really great time and. Um, it was the most rundown property that you would have ever seen. Wow. Um, <laughs> the house, you could barely see the house. Um, it was covered in, yeah, it was really rundown, but Nathan and I knew that it was what we wanted. Um, and, yeah, life slows down when you're out here, which is really great. And, I mean, our goal is to be as self-sustainable as possible and we work um, every day to be able to achieve that and it's not a walk in the park it is quite stressful actually when you have animals that rely on you and you also have a business and a baby but um yeah Nathan and I are really really happy and grateful to be where we are that's for sure oh, I yeah. Love it. yeah I recommend everybody follows Love Your Guts and Brooke and Nathan on Instagram because yeah it's really cool watching like for example um you guys will harvest an animal like a pig or, or a cow and yeah. uh, it'll be like an on-premise butcher will be chopping up your animal um, yeah. and then you guys will cook it all yourselves. It's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's really, um, 
I mean, if you had to ask me 10 years ago, I probably would have been so against that. But <laughs> when you actually are exposed to it, you realize it's the most humane way of doing it. And, totally. um, you know, we love our animals and we give them so much love and they take up a lot of our day and, you know, we, we love that. And, you know, William, my son, is out feeding them and giving them water and patting them when he can. And He is the cutest little boy, Brooke. <laughs> yeah, but we just have a relationship with our animals. But, you know, when it comes time to kill them, you know, I just know that they've had the best life possible um and it's really rewarding to be able to eat the meat and you know we can we can notice the, the difference in the meat quality like when we run out of meat and we have to go and buy it even when it's from like an awesome farm it's just not the same um and I don't I don't really know why but I'm kind of guessing that the animal is around it's at home when it's killed and it's not stressed or anything and yeah, it's really rewarding. And that that's always been our goal, to raise our own animals and um, be able to have our own meat and veggies. And, yeah, it's really rewarding. Mm, I think it's fantastic. You guys are a real inspiration. I'm going to do the same. I will get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's an awesome goal to have. Yeah. I think in terms of it tasting better, like when you put that much positive intent and love into anything you're always going to get an amazing outcome so you know i don't think it's any surprise that it's such a pleasure to you know enjoy that animal um, that you yeah. look after so well yeah and we we also keep every part of the animal as well like the only thing that goes back into the ground is the stomach and if we were really game we probably could do something with that but it goes into my compost <laughs> Um, yeah but in terms of all the organs and you know we we cook up all those and include them in our meals and we keep all the fat and make tallow and I make skin um, moisturizer out of the tallow like we and the bones you know make bone broth and it's just yeah it's rewarding to have the entire animal in your freezer and knowing that you're going to use it it's cool yeah it's amazing um Brooke I want to ask you some questions about your products yeah. Um, so at Mackenzie's Meats, we stock the liver capsules and we stock the organ blend. So it's, yeah. I think it's heart, liver, kidney, spleen, yeah. uh, and they're really popular. And then also for myself, I've bought the MSM um, and I've bought the collagen powder. Yeah. And they're both awesome. And like, the, so the MSM, I still don't actually understand what it is, but I read your description on the website and I was like, yeah, I want to buy that. I, yeah. I had... Um, like Achilles tendonitis, inflammation in my Achilles. Yeah. Um, and I started taking the MSM and I wasn't waking up with the with the sore tight Achilles every day. Like it pretty much it pretty much works straight away. Yeah. Um, that's, awesome. that's so good. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's great. Can you yeah. can you tell me what, what it what it is or how it works? Um yep. Yeah. Uh, so I actually am not even gonna try and butcher yeah, the way. Yeah. <laughs> say MSM. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what to say that. We're gonna abbreviate it. Um, but it's it's a really natural form of sulfur, and a lot of people get um a little bit scared when they have gut issues of um having sulfur because it can create gassiness and things like that. But it's a really mild and natural uh form of it, and also really bioavailable. And the reason why I have it in our box is because it's such a potent anti-inflammatory, which is why you would have seen the inflammation mm. um, go like such positive results with it. Um, and the, the main reason it's in the box is because it is really, really uh, powerful in sealing and healing the gut lining, which is um, usually a root issue, which a lot of people have that causes inflammation and causes an immune response from um, the immune system, which shows up as joint pain or shows up as tendonitis or shows up as skin issues. So um, MSM is really important to, I mean, like make sure you are focusing on an anti-inflammatory diet, but MSM is something that supplements that as well by reducing inflammation. Awesome. So yeah. anti-inflammatory and heals the gut lining. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so, yeah, 
when you heal the gut lining, then symptoms start to go away. So yeah. the MSM, I mean, it probably may have influenced your tendonitis and your Achilles, but what it probably did more of is start to heal the gut lining, which um, reduces inflammation in the microbiome. Um, it reduces that immune response that can sometimes happen. And then as a side effect, it reduces your joint pain because it kind of all is linked back to each other. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> but it worked either way. But yeah. that's awesome. Okay, I think, yeah. I think we need to start stocking that at Mackenzie's Mates. Yeah, I love it. So good. I even give it to William sometimes, um, take the, the powder out of the capsule and hide it in the smoothie or something. Um, yeah, nice. Awesome, yeah. Um, what, what other products should, should I be thinking about stocking and, and can we help people with? Oh, um, all of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the organ, the organ capsules are awesome. We actually yeah, have, yeah, we have heaps more coming out. We've got a new range, um, about to be released. And, um, I think the reason I'm so passionate is about them because everyone can benefit from taking organ capsules um the collagen is awesome because it has it's not just your plain collagen it has the vitamin c and um vitamin d and iodine in it so all through food sources but they're all together which help the absorption of the actual collagen um and then more i guess one of the products that was a real big catalyst for me was the bentonite clay okay um and the reason being is because it's a a really powerful um, detoxing agent. And uh, it's like one of the most important steps that someone can take when they're first starting is um, getting rid of a heap of heavy metals or toxins or waste buildup or things that can be increasing that inflammation in the microbiome. The bentonite clay um, binds to those things and actually helps your body eliminate them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really amazing how it works and how good it works as well. Um, a lot of women, after they've taken it for a week or two, say that they have like a metallic taste in their mouth, mm. uh, which is really amazing because the bentonite clay, it binds to heavy metals and it actually gets takes it out of your body either through, um, you know, poo, urine or, right. or you feel, yeah, you feel it come out in your breath as well and your skin as well. Wow. So it's so fascinating, yeah. Yeah, that's probably a message to those women that like, hey, you've got these heavy metals in you that clearly need to come out. Totally, totally, yeah. That's but, awesome. yeah, I really love that one. And I still, I mean, I don't take it every day, but I still take it now if I feel like my skin might flare up or maybe I ate something, I went out for dinner and ate something with gluten in it, I might take uh, the bentonite clay in the morning just to help clear everything out. It's awesome for that. Mm. yeah so uh, like that's a tool in your tool belt i guess if if yeah. something does happen like you know you, you want to go out with friends and you want to not worry about what you're yeah. eating yeah then, then you know how to recover um you yeah. sort of um maybe one final question for you brooke you mentioned before about the um food intolerances turning up when you've kind of got like a damaged gut and yeah. uh, that's definitely something i can relate to like i've had big periods where i've haven't eaten any gluten and haven't eaten any dairy because yeah. I felt like every time I ate those foods, like I could feel my, my gut like swelling up, like it, it actually hurt. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, Oh, I'm intolerant to them. I'm going to avoid them. I'll never be able to have them again. But then more, more recently I've been having raw dairy and I've will occasionally have like, you know, a bit of a croissant or, or something that has gluten yeah. in it. Um, can you, yeah, I just, I'm so surprised that you, that when you do heal things, you actually can go back to occasionally eating those foods. Yeah. And have you been fine now eating like occasionally like a croissant or dairy? Yeah. Like, yeah, occasionally, like literally like I would have one beer that was like sort of made, that was quite hoppy. So it's like sort of made with a lot of wheat and I could just I'd feel like bloated for 24 hours and it would be horrible. Um, yeah. Whereas now I'll do it and I'll, and I'll feel okay. It's not yeah. ideal, but yeah. it's, it's not it's not the same reaction. No, totally. Like, um, it's not ideal to have those foods, but I mean, like, you have to live your life a little bit, and 
you know, Nathan and I will go out for a pizza every week or every two weeks and has gluten in it and we're totally fine. You know, you need to be yeah. able to have a, a resilient gut where you can eat things like that and not have symptoms. Yeah. Um, the main issue that I see is that what you did is um, you start to get intolerances to things. So you start to realize, oh, I can't have dairy. I can't have gluten anymore. Like they trigger these symptoms and people just cut them out and think, oh, I can never have those foods again. That's what I um, thought. Yeah. So you just cut them out. But then the, the real issue is that people don't do anything to try and heal their gut in that time. So if you don't do anything in the interim and then you just randomly start include those foods again, you're still going to have those symptoms. Um, but if you cut those foods out at the start and then you start, you know, focusing on your food and, and creating, reducing inflammation in your gut and you start focusing on your stress and you start taking some love your gut supplements and you go through the program where you go through the proper journey of healing your gut, then you'll see that you can start to... Um, start to have those foods again and not get any symptoms that was the same thing for me. the biggest the biggest one was dairy i thought you know i love dairy i like i love it yeah. <laughs> there was a point where i just could not have it my skin would flare up so much um i would get like gassy and so bloated and I was like, right, I just need to cut it out. And I kind of lost the joy of my life. And then um, that when I actually started healing my gut, you know, taking these products and focusing on reducing stress and, you know, doing all the really nourishing things that you need to do to heal your gut and, and reduce inflammation. Then when I introduced dairy again, it was totally fine. And, you know, now I'm more aware of the dairy that I'm choosing, like always organic or raw dairy where possible. And you're not going to have issues if you actually put the work in to heal your gut lining. It, it comes from your gut lining, but to heal that gut lining and then, yeah, you're not going to see the same amount of issues. Mm. But, you know, we're not designed to eat gluten and we're not designed to eat processed foods. Like your body doesn't have the means to be able to break those down. So, um, you know, I wouldn't go and have those things every day, but yeah. you need to have a resilient enough gut to be able to handle them every once in a while when you do want to you know, go out and enjoy your dinner or whatever. Yeah. Perfectly said. I mean, that should fill people with optimism that they can, you know, you can occasionally treat yourself with those things. And it won't hurt you the way maybe it is now. But yeah. the trick is you do need to do the work. And yeah. yeah, you can do the work by joining Love Your Guts. And I'm on that. So obviously I buy products because, well, I've tried a lot of them, Mackenzie's Meats, blah, blah, blah. But I'm on, I get your emails as well. So like anyone who is just a bit curious about Love Your Guts, sign up to the newsletter and then you get an email. Like It's not annoying. It's, it's maybe every couple of days or every three days. And it's like detailed tips on how you can improve your gut health and yeah. it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so it can, it can be like stress or it can be, you know, tips for if you're, if you're experiencing these symptoms, this is what you can do to alleviate them. Like it's, it's stuff like that. It's really practical. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we put that on social media, like Instagram and yeah, that's true. Facebook and they always, they come through as emails too. So you can sign up to the email or just, follow us on Instagram, but I always try to give really simple tips that people can do without spending any money. So it's a good, good catalyst for people to start their journey. Mm, yeah. I love getting them. Um, all right, Brooke, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us a bit about your, your story and about mm -hmm. love your guts. Um, and yeah, thanks for helping so many people understand their gut health and then heal it because as we've talked about, it's so, it's so important for your quality of life. Thank you so much. It was good to have a chat. My pleasure.